Okay, cool. So I'm going to make this video a lot more fun than the last one, which had a lot of numbers involved. So that's pretty much like the hardest thing we're going to have to do is calculate your meal plans by the number and everything and just kind of just dial it in. So, but once you get it down, you, you got it down and you won't have to do too much more afterwards. And when it comes to like substituting your meals out, like if you don't want shrimp one day, maybe this could be chicken breast. Or if you want to have another lean meat, you're more than welcome to. Or same thing when it comes to chicken thighs. If you don't want chicken thighs, you can get like a, another fatty meat such as salmon or bison and eat that instead. So uh, it comes it comes really easy to substitute things out as you wish once you get a basic structure down. And once you keep in mind things like uh, five ounces of shrimp is a, is a no fat protein. So then you would substitute it with another no fat protein. But then like, let's say you have a fatty protein in, your, in one of your other meals, then you just substitute it with another fatty meat, bison, salmon, any kind of fish like that. So, uh, but when it comes down to it, like as long as you have your basic plan and then you can kind of substitute things out from there on out, it gets a lot easier when it comes to just having more variety. But this video right here, I'm gonna discuss how to get more fun into your diet. So this is what we're gonna discuss. So when you get onto this diet plan I'm discussing with you, the one gram of protein for your ideal weight, divide that in half for your carbs, and then you have a third of that for your fats. Like it's a really calorie deficit meal plan. So I mean, as of right now, like say like for instance, in this meal plan right here, we're only doing 1300 calories a day. So which is moderately low, it's pretty low, but um, again, it's in a calorie deficit. So you're gonna be losing weight the entire time while following along with this diet. Having said that, if you follow to your plan as great as possible, you can have a thousand calorie cheat meal throughout the week. Like once a week, you can have a thousand calories. So, but you gotta be careful about this because if you wait all week long, you wait six days to have your cheat meal and you blow your thousand calories in one little meal, it's, it's, um, it's gonna be tough going another six more days without having a cheat meal and sticking to your diet without like, you know, without being good enough to throw in some variety or whatever. So I'm just saying when you're first beginning and you're sticking to your diet plan as strict as possible, you know, you're gonna be looking forward to your cheat meals. So what I prefer to do is instead of spending a thousand calories on one meal once a week, I'll spread this out over seven days. So a thousand calories over the course of a week, if you divide a thousand by seven, you get 142 calories every day as a cheat meal. So like for instance, if you're sticking to your calories, your proteins, carbs, and fats strictly, like on this, if you were to add in 142 more calories, I, don't, I already ate my chocolate for the week, so, but this chocolate bar right here, Vino Coco, half a chocolate bar is going to be, let's see here, where is it at? 133, 130 calories. So I could have half a chocolate bar and still stick to my diet plan eating taco shrimp, barbecue chicken, having chocolate yogurt, and still having half a chocolate bar on top of all of this, I'm still going to lose weight and so are you. So, but that's the whole plan is to be in a calorie deficit which still nourishes your muscles, gives you enough carbs, enough fats to live off of and feel great and still be healthy, but you still have a little bit of wiggle room to like add in a little bit more fun. So, I mean, when it comes to the, the calories on the cheat meals, I started off doing a thousand calories a week, doing my one cheat meal a week, going to the Cheesecake Factory or whatever, which by the way, if you go to Cheesecake Factory, I mean like nothing there is under a thousand calories. So you have to get half an appetizer or half a cheesecake, like a cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory, their most basic one is 1200 calories. So you can have half a cheesecake and then maybe half an appetizer if that's what you want to do. but. This is what I like to do when it comes to cheat meals, is just spread it out over the course of the week, have some chocolate, have some chocolate and peanut butter or whatever, and just stick to the plan. And again, like your meal plan's already fun. You got taco seasoning on your shrimp. So you got taco shrimp, barbecue chicken, chocolate, yogurt. So it's not like you're desperate for any more fun than you're already having. So, but you have some great meals all day long. But if you want to add on to it, you got your 140 calories a day or your 1,000 calories a week in cheat meals. So 
I just wanted to cover the cheat meal section on what you're allowed to do and how you can just still add in more fun into your diet and still enjoy your food and still lose weight the entire time you do this. So for some fun substitutions, for instance, let's go back to our basic diet plan here, which I did in a previous video. So we got, we got egg whites and toast. We got shrimp with rice. We got chicken thighs and potatoes. So like we got carb sources from your toast, rice, and your protein here. So like between these three carb sources, your toast, rice, and potatoes, that's roughly around 75 carbs already in these three meals. So like why the pizza is out right now is because I have pizza every now and then and at Costco you get actually three to a pack, but this is really, really cool. So watch this. So what we can do is you have 75 carbs between these first three meals. But if you were to get, say, like a pizza, and this is, it's a pretty nice sized pizza here. If you were to get, looking at the nutrition labels, we got right here, one fourth of a pizza slice is going to be 36 carbs. You also got 14 grams of fat, and then you also got 12 grams of protein. And that's for a fourth of a pizza. So if you were to actually have a half of a pizza instead, and you had double this, this 36 carbs is 72 carbs. And guess what? Your first three meals of the day have around 75 carbs already. So if you were able to wake up and eat your egg whites, and instead of having toast, let's just say you have like a side of vegetables, like avocados, for instance, I, I would eat I've eaten avocados with my egg whites before, like as a side item, and it was really great. So you have a nice breakfast with egg whites and avocados. And then like for your next two meals, you can have a fourth of a slice of pizza. And so this is a pretty big slice, uh, roughly around 12 inches, maybe 13 inches, whatever. But if you're gonna have half a pizza all day long, this is 72 carbs. So you can literally have half a pizza all day long and still be under your carb allowance for the day. So if you wanted to have a quarter of a pizza and then you had your 32 carbs right here, you could have that in like your second meal or even have it in your third meal. So you can have half a pizza between your second and third meal throughout the day and that would be like your carb allowance. So you can still eat half a pizza all day long and still have your 140 calories in cheat snacks. So you can literally still have half a pizza and half a chocolate bar and still lose weight because you're gonna be just around that 75 carbs a day. So it's only when you eat all the pizza and then you eat all the chocolate bar, that's when you start to gain weight, but you can have half a pizza and still lose weight sticking to your diet plan because this is only 72 carbs. So. When you do that though, you gotta consider, okay, well, you're still gonna have 10 more carbs here in your yogurt and your whey protein, and that's still not bad. So at the end of the day, you're only having 82 carbs. So realistically though, that's five more carbs less than eating toast, rice, and potatoes. So like if you don't like toast or rice or potatoes and you gotta have pizza, you could eat half a pizza and still have less carbs than if you were to eat all the healthier stuff if you want to consider that but you know right here this pizza is uh gluten-free four cheese i get thin crust i mean cheese is good for you i mean whatever so i mean if you really got to have pizza this is what you can do and i've already done it i've had two pizzas already which means i've gone you know if i cut a pizza in half that's two days of carbs so like there were four days in the past two weeks where i literally had half a pizza as my carb source and i'm still you know, where I want to be weight wise. So I can't say I'm still losing weight because I'm right where I want to be. So I can't tell you I lost 10 pounds this week, but I've eaten two pizzas in the past two weeks and still ate chocolate and I'm right where I want to be weight wise. So that's all I wanted to say is like, you can do fun stuff when it comes to your substitutions, like rice, potatoes, you know, as long as you're counting your calories and counting your carbs, you can do whatever you want. Or even one last example, like you're, if, you, if you really want a brownie, for instance, you go get a brownie and you know a brownie is 25 carbs. Well then in your sh shrimp taco um, 
medley here. Instead of having rice, you can have shrimp, your taco shrimp with vegetables, cook it up however you want to, and then have a brownie afterwards as your carb source. And you're gonna lose weight as long as it's, you know, 25 carbs. Well, technically, as long as it's in a day, you're only eating 75 carbs, then you're still losing weight. So you could have two brownies that are both 25 carbs each and have be 50 carbs total and still have your piece of toast. And then you're at 72 carbs for the day. So you're, you can have two brownies and a piece of toast and lose weight because you're still right at your carbs, you know, your number. Now, again, this is like for 150 pounds. So if you're, if you want to aim to weigh 180 pounds, you can have a few more carbs than what we're talking about. Or even if you're aiming for 120, well then if you're aiming for 120, you're probably a, a smaller frame person. So like eating less food, you know, you're not going to be too upset about because it's more appropriate for your body size. So I'm just saying like for meal substitutions, like this is a great, bare bones like frame diet to stick to like rice is great you know toast potatoes you know potatoes or vegetables you got vegetables here so you're still getting great nutrients especially in your yogurt you got probiotics there eggs so you got healthy fats and healthy proteins this is a great all-day diet but when you want to have a little bit of fun you want to have some pizza just don't eat the rice don't eat the don't eat the, the potatoes and stay away from the toast and then plan it out to where it's like, okay, the, the, the pizza is gonna be my, my carb source for the day. Now, the other thing though, you gotta consider is the proteins, and then you also got fats here. So if you had half a pizza, you're eating 28 grams of fat. And if you have a half a pizza, you're having 24 grams of protein. So you still gotta consider all of that stuff. So if you wanted to have half a pizza, that's 72 carbs, but then it's also 25 grams of fat. So to keep this meal, like keep this more balanced, you're getting 25 grams of protein right here, but it's 75 grams of fat. So every time you eat a quarter of a, of a slice, just make sure you're getting another five ounces of protein and however that would be. Maybe it's gonna be chicken breast. So you could get chicken breast, five ounces of chicken breast, and douse it with barbecue sauce or even say buffalo sauce and have buffalo chicken on top of your pizza and have five ounces of chicken and then have another five ounces of chicken here. So if you have 10 ounces of chicken, that's gonna be 50 grams of protein plus the 25 grams of protein in your pizza. So that's 75 grams of protein and then you're getting 75 carbs and then you're gonna have another, what was it, 28 grams, you got 14 grams of fat. So that's gonna be 28 grams of fat. So you're still below 30 grams of fat. You're allowed to have 50. So you still have to have 22 more grams of fat throughout the whole day. So go back to this example, 10 ounces of chicken, that's 50 grams of protein, plus another 25 grams of protein in the pizza. So you're 75 grams of protein, then the pizza itself is 72 carbs, and then you're getting 30 grams of fat. So, I mean, you still have 20 grams of fat left to get, but you know, but you're still got 75 grams of protein, so now you gotta find 75 grams of protein somewhere else, and another 20, 20 grams of fat somewhere else. So, but just let you know, for a meal substitution, you can have half a pizza, and still lose weight as long as you're keeping track of everything you do. And so that's gonna be about it for this section when it comes to the, the fun stuff, like brownies, pizza, or whatever you wanna have. So that's how you can eat carbs, your favorite meals, and still lose weight. You just gotta calculate everything you do. As long as you keep track of what you do, you're more than fine. The last topic I want to talk about really fast is when it comes to better meal options. And so like, I know I have like right here, the most basic diet plan to stick to, but I know like people aren't going to stick to this all the time. And even I don't myself. So, um, but what you can do is like, just think a little bit more like, I don't want to say common sense. Cause you actually got to start thinking about what you're doing. So if you got to a restaurant, like yesterday I went to a restaurant with my brother, instead of having the fajitas with like the flour tortillas and all the chips, et cetera, I had, um, I had shrimp and steak tacos with a lettuce wrap. So, I mean, I'm still getting protein and fat from the meat, but I, then like it's a low carb option that I'm going with, with the lettuce wraps, because I know there's gonna be a little bit more fat than I want to count or even consider in like the steak or even the oil they cook everything in. So, just to play it safe, I have like four tortilla chips with the chips and salsa that came out early before the meal. And then I have lettuce wraps. So I know like each tortilla chip has like two carbs in it. So I had 10 carbs with my 
tacos, but then I had lettuce wraps as my shell because each tortilla is like 20 carbs. So I don't want to have three tortillas and have 60 carbs in just one meal plus a tortilla chips. Now I'm at 70 carbs in just one meal. So that's when things get too ridiculous. So, but for the better options, here's, you know, one more example on how you can make meals great when you're coming off the tracks, right? So I know a lot of people have like spaghetti night where they just load up their spaghetti, their plate on their, they load up their plate with spaghetti and then they just load up on it. So, but here's the thing about, yes, I do have pasta on hand and you can have pasta as long as you keep track, like I said, but one serving size is going to be 42 carbs. But the thing about it is like a serving size is literally like a handful. Like it's, but when on spaghetti night happens, you, you put on handful after handful, not, your, not that you're dishing out with your hands, but like your whole plate is gonna have like three to four servings of pasta on your plate, which means you're gonna get 150 carbs just in one meal. And then on top of it, you got the meat. It's like you're putting ground beef in it, which one pound of it, you're gonna split it in half or by fours by whoever you're sharing it with. So one pound of beef is going to have 80 grams of protein in it. So if you're cutting in fours, you get a fourth of that meat, you're only gonna get 20 grams of protein, and but then your pasta is 160, and then your fat ratio is around 20 grams of, of fat because there's 20, it's, red meat is like one for one for protein to fat, um, unless it's bison, which is leaner in beef and, and fat, but when it comes to regular red meat, like beef beef, is one for one. It's 20 grams of protein, 20 grams of fat, and that's roughly where it's at. But when you have spaghetti night, going back to that example, if you got 20 grams of protein from your a quarter pound of beef, but then you have four servings of pasta, now you got 160 carbs, and then you have 20 grams of fat from the beef, that's completely out of, out of range. So if you wanna have high protein, medium carb, and decent amount of fats in every meal. So instead of having spaghetti night, this is where you can start changing things around and be a little more creative. So instead of like spaghetti night, what you do is instead have chicken parmesan as another option. Whereas the chicken itself, the chicken breast is gonna be 25 to 30 grams of protein. Then you have cheese on top of the, the, the chicken, which is gonna be another 10 grams of protein. And then when you have your one serving of pasta, you got 42 carbs. And then when it comes to the fat, Basically, you just got the fat that you cooked the chicken in, which could be 15 grams of fat from the butter. So let's just say on a chicken parmesan, you got your 30 grams of protein from your chicken, another 10 more grams of protein from the cheese. So now you got 40 grams of protein. Then you got your one serving of pasta, which is 42 carbs. And then you have your 15 grams of fat from the butter that you cooked your chicken in. So now you got a, four, instead of having a spaghetti meal with 100, 60 carbs, you're now having chicken parmesan, which has 40 grams of protein, 40 carbs, and then 15 grams of fat. Whereas spaghetti night is the other way around, 20 grams of protein, 160 carbs, 20 grams of fat. So it's completely out of balance. Chicken parmesan, then you got the pasta, then the fats, that's more balanced and that's something that can help you lose weight. And that's a better option than having just spaghetti night. So, but the trick is like, if you go back to it, if you want to have a lot of pasta or a lot of carbs, you have to make up for it in some way by adding more protein in it. And however it has to happen. So, um, you're going to have ch Buffalo chicken with your pizza and lose weight. Or instead of having spaghetti night, have chicken Parmesan and then have a more balanced meal when it comes to your proteins, carbs, and fats. So, but all that stuff gets super, you know, relative as, as to what you're doing outside of your diet. And so, but I just want to give you an idea of what you can do outside of like your basic everyday diet plan that you can stick to. So just want to give you some more options to have fun and um, start creating your own meal plans. And so I kind of covered how to do meal substitutions in this video. Uh, whereas if you don't want to have shrimp, just add in chicken breast, or if you don't want you know, chicken thighs, add in another fatty protein. So I covered a lot in this video, um, three main topics, your cheat meals, your substitutions, and then better meal options. So, 
But just being smart about everything that you put in your body is going to help promote your weight loss. So, but just remember like one step off the track, you, you take a night off and you go do something else. Like you go eat the entire pizza at some pizza parlor and, and then you don't have enough protein or whatever. It's like every step back you take is another three steps forward that you need to do to make up for it. And this, when you're perfect with your diet, it's hard to like make up those extra steps that you missed. So that's why it's always important to stick to your diet as best as possible. And just realize that once you get down to your ideal weight, you can start adding in some more calories. And because we are at 1300 calories, this is a calorie deficit. But I'll explain this to you later in my other notes. But like once you get down to your ideal weight, you can start adding in more calories to maintain that weight and stop losing weight. Because if you stick to the, the calorie deficit plan, you're going to keep losing weight more and more and more. So I've been down to 149 pounds on this diet plan. But then like there was a time when once I was down to 149 pounds, it was like, okay, now it's time to start adding in more calories. So that way I can stick to the plan. So as far as like staying at my ideal weight, which is around 153, 155. So if I'm at 149, that's way too small. So, but I'm just saying like, you're gonna lose weight on this plan. And then once you get down to your ideal weight, you start adding in more calories. I'm gonna show you how to do that later on in other videos. But this video is all about how to have more fun with your diet, your calorie cheat meals, your fun substitutions like your pizzas and your chocolates and better meal options such as chicken parmesan instead of having like an entire plate of spaghetti. So. This video is going to help you out, have you getting more meal options out there and start enjoying life and start and keep enjoying food. So I'll see you next video where I'm going to teach you how to keep losing weight by still enjoying all your favorite meals.